Good morning, class. Uh, the last time we spoke, we were winding up uh, chapter four, and we um, actually provided a summary of chapters one through four. And just before we get into chapter five, where we're going to start digging into um, macroeconomics, um, how we measure output in this particular chapter, I wanted just to briefly <clears throat> just recap a couple of key concepts from the first four chapters because they're going to be used throughout the rest of the text. Um, also, remember, we talked about the production possibilities curve, concave curve. Uh, it's the trade-off between two variables. One variable we plotted on the y-axis, one variable we plotted on the x-axis. Um, and it was based on factors of, of the production process or input factors being fixed we were using those resources or those factors of production at full employment, and we were making the assumption that to be on that production possibilities curve, we were producing or had a production process that was extremely efficient, so we were maximizing our efficiency in the production process. And remember, so the curve's concave back to the origin of, of the X and Y axis, and if you're on that production possibility curve, again, all the resources fully employed, and we were producing those outputs in a very efficient manner. If you fell on a point inside, so between the origin and the concave portion of that production possibility curve, you were either inefficient or you weren't employing your resources to full capacity. And then we also said there will be points outside of that concave curve that are unattainable, mainly because we have the factors of production are fixed. And again, remember factors of production, we're talking about labor, we're talking about capital, and uh, there are two types of capital. You've got your fixed capital stock, uh, buildings, machinery, Starbucks, it's the coffee maker, it's the microwave they use to heat the sandwiches. Uh, if you're talking about uh, the hospital, Meharry Medical Center, uh, it's the building itself, it's the lab equipment, the radiology equipment, uh, the beds, the nursing stations, all of that is fixed capital. And that is different, especially in the economic view, from financial capital. Financial capital, we talked in, I guess, with Chapter 4, talking about stocks and bonds and some things like that. So that's financial capital. But when we're talking about factors of production and um, scarce resources, at least from a, an economic viewpoint and on the, the production possibility curve, we're talking about capital stock. Then you've also got the natural resources where land falls into natural resources. And we talked about uh, in the instance of the Meharry Medical Center, there's not a lot of room for expansion for Meharry. So they are somewhat constrained by that, by that resource. And then you've got technology and it's, it's not so much the technology of, of, um, what the new greatest, newest and greatest uh, iPhone is going to be. It's more along technology of the technology of the production process. And that's where entrepreneurs come in. They're trying to generate profits, trying to maximize those profits. And they're going to continually look for opportunities to improve the technology of the production process. So we kind of wound all that together. And then lastly, um, what we were talking about is um, the the primary questions that any economy or any entity or any individual themselves <clears throat> are faced with is what do we produce? How do we produce it in the most efficient manner? For whom do we produce it? And then also remember that there's the preservation of resources for future expansion and growth. And in chapter four, we talked about if you bought a share of stock, in the stock and the company was profitable, they could either pass on those profits as a dividend or they could keep it as retained earnings. And that retained earnings is to somewhat their opportunity to uh, preserve resources or preserve, preserve especially capital stock for future uh, utilization and future profits and to move that, that growth out and to remove that production possibility curve out too. So <clears throat> as we're thinking about all of those, those are. Uh, more um, in the vein of maybe uh, microeconomics, theory of the firm, how products are produced, 
We're going to start moving now into the macroeconomic realm or, or sphere. And we're going to start talking about growth and measuring output, uh, how we measure employment, uh, interest rates, price levels. Price levels, of course, includes um, going to include inflation and the impact of inflation on um, how we move forward and how we grow that economy, <clears throat> and especially how we measure the economy. And we'll get into that in a little more detail in chapter five as, as, as far as how inflation and the price level impacts that. <clears throat> so what we're looking at on um, the, um, I guess the macroeconomic side uh, is are we maximizing the quantity of the right stuff that we're producing and are we minimizing the quantity of the scarce resources we use in that production process? And then you kind of flip that around. And on the macro side, we're also looking at, are we producing what we're capable of? Is that production possibility curve pushed out as far as it can? Or is there potential opportunity for growth and to push it out a little farther? And then secondly, are we producing goods and services that provide material company to society or the consuming population, however you want to look at it. So we've gone from, are we producing, are we maximizing the output? Are we minimizing the resources? Now we're looking at, are we, are we maximizing and are producing what we're capable of producing from a growth perspective? And are we providing uh, goods and services uh, that are going to benefit the welfare of the consuming population or society in general. That's kind of a, a wrap up, kind of an introduction. Oh, there is one last thing. We'll get into gross domestic product and then probably in the next uh, installment of chapter five. Um, and the difference between gross domestic product and gross national product, and actually both trying to measure output um, for the most part, you'll only see gross national product um, in some of the older writings, some of the older textbooks. I, I don't remember exactly um, when they when the government stopped using it as a measurement tool, but gross domestic product is goods and services either consumed or produced by individuals within a country's boundaries. So individuals in the United States boundaries, what they're consuming or producing, gross national product, the differentiator was it measured their, they called it citizens, but basically measured their population, whether they were producing and consuming inside the boundaries, but also if they were producing and consuming outside the boundaries. So in some foreign countries or, or something along that. So it's gross national products kind of gone by the wayside and it's been replaced by gross domestic product. And there'll be some variations of gross domestic product that we'll talk about as we go forward. So let's uh, wind this kind of introductory piece up. And when we get back, we'll jump into gross domestic product and start uh, looking at how it's calculated, what it means, uh, and why we're even concerned with gross domestic product. Talk to everybody soon. Thanks.